Andy Lema Africa returns to his first book on Steve Biko after 10 years. Since 2011, Andy Lema Africa has written other books. He looks at uh, the political life of Steve Bandu Biko in a historical context and reveals the significance of Biko as a leading figure of one of the most creative generations in South Africa's recent history, the Black Consciousness Generation. The Eyes That Lit Our Lives is a blow-by-blow -blow account of events from the late 1960s to the mid-1970s and a reflection on the energy of the black consciousness generation. Uh, I'm joined by Dr. Maafrika now to discuss uh, the life and times of Steve Bantubiko. Very good morning to you. Thank you so much uh, for, for your time. Tomorrow um, we celebrate Steve Biko Day essentially and it is a moment of reflection but uh, for those that don't know the kind of giant of a man Steve Biko was, the teacher, the, the passionate activist that he was. What is it that we should be reflecting as we remember the life of Steve Biko? Good morning to you and good morning to the viewers. Of course, the teacher. We all look for teachers. We all look around for people who can give us ideas. That's what we missed when we were taken to school. They never told us that this is all about finding an idea and understanding the ideas of others to a point of getting the capacity to develop your own ideas. Lives are changed by ideas. We have seen that with around the world. That's what we saw from this man. There was a time when I came across the words of Bessie Heard, and she said, in writing books, you don't have to go away. You don't have to find a distant place. A book is always around you. And there will, there will be that kind of feeling within yourself that wells up. So I got that kind of moment that Bessie Heard was talking about. Because here was Steve Biko welling within me. And even when I was hearing other things, there was this particular gap. They don't talk about a beautiful man, a very, very handsome fellow with a smile, with eyes that seem to be changing certain things within us. And so I went into investigating about him, talked to many of his colleagues of this 1970s generation, I talked to people who were older than that generation, such as Dr. Mdato Motlana and his wife, who was an activist in the 1940s, Mama Sali Motlana. I talked to his teacher, uh, Professor Fatima Mir. I talked to his relatives, the, his late brother, Kaya Biko. And I came down to look for a generation that was younger than him, uh, that was looking up to him. Uh, people like Du Manzovu, who was this young member of the Union of Black Journalists. There was also, uh, there, were, there were many of these people. And slowly and slowly, there was this picture coming together of this fellow. Mm. Today, South Africa can remember a man who crossed our lives and left us with a challenge in our minds. The greatest thing about Biko and his black consciousness is that they were not going to do for us all the things. They were asking us to participate in liberating our own minds. When they said, black man, you are on your own, they meant that you, even if I am not, I'm away as a leader, you are on your own. You, are, you must be on your own resources. You will do the mental freedom by yourself. Or if it is studies, you will do studies by yourself. You don't have to look at the information for, the, for each, for being information, but you must synthesize it and, and, and seek to grow your mind. That's your process. This is what we can remember. This country needs people like Biko uh. in terms of leadership, in terms of uh, compassion with people, in terms of commitment in development, in terms of having an ear for others because he was such a person. He succeeded in his projects because he listened to others and he had a way of collecting energies 
of other people. He was a very vision. He was a visionary. He talked about an Azania somewhere in the future. And he, he did things here, but his eye was deep in the future, and he shared that kind of vision. So we need a leadership that can, that can be like that, mm -hmm. a leadership that does not hold and believe that it can think for others, but a leadership that can um, agree to thinking together with people and sharing and having and allowing that vision that it must uh, have spaces for other people. Absolutely. As you mentioned, some of the people you spoke to, um, some of the conversations you had, uh, speaking about Kaya Biko, in your book, um, The Eyes That Lit Our Lives, um, you describe Kaya Biko himself speaks of the days leading to Steve Biko's death, saying clouds were gathering, the smell of death was in the air. Speak to us about that because it's really described um, in the most uh, visual of ways as we learn about what happened. That was one of the most difficult interviews I've ever had. Yes, I've had people really, really coming, becoming emotional and crying over a time uh, that happened many, many years back. But when we sat with Putkaya, it was in my house. He came to my house and said, we have to be together to do this. And he was a civil servant. Um, and the first thing he saw was the car of the movement, the car of the organization. And he said, no, this car is not, doesn't come here all the time. And he stepped out of the building and sought to approach these people. Between the time of reaching them, then he said, there was lightning as if it was going to rain. And when I listened to those words, I said, it, just, it, was, it was something happening only on him, perhaps. But he approached this golf. The golf's color was black. And they were looking at him. And he asked them directly, is he dead? Then they said, yes. So he broke down. Mm. I broke down too. We had to take the camera away. Kaya was, was very special to me, uh, my sister. He had adopted me as a son. He paid for my lobola at his insistence. He said, Andila, I don't want to die without leaving you with a wife. So he led a delegation to my in-laws and we went through that. We were, we were, he was, he had really, you know, I had lost my, my father quite early in my life. And we had developed this kind of relationship. And through him, I was able to get a moment next to Biko. He himself was a, an activist, you know. He had joined the Pan-Africanist movement way before Biko was political. And when he entered Lovedale College in 1962 as a student, he was elected there as a secretary. So he was quite a very visible student leader. In 1963, the security police came to Lovedale to arrest him. Unfortunately, or this is something that used to happen, the principal of the school, Mr. Vech, decided that if there was one Biko who was nonsensical or notorious politically, then he's going to clean his school of any other Biko. So he went to the classes and collected Kaya's name, uh, English name was Matthias. said, Matthias, come to my office. And he went to form four class. Hey, Steve, come here. And he led them into his office. And there they were, the security branch, who obviously, according to Kaya, had been um, working all night because they had overcoats. So they were arrested. They were put in a car. The car was driven to the nearest police station which is in that town called Alice, where Forte is. Then Steve Biko was taken in. Uh, there was interrogation. Somebody spoke very loudly to say, you and your brother have been expelled from Love Day. So what are you going to do, you, Steve? You're going to walk back to the college, take your staff and the staff of your brother, find your way back to King Lemstown and go home. Then they went for him, Kaya. This is how he remembers it. Mm. Hey, they saluted me in the traditional PAC way. Said, ah, poor uncle. And that's when he realized, yeah, 
things, it's now happening. Mm. That was a detention. Dr. Ma'Africa, I, I hate to interrupt you when you're speaking of such a, a, an amazing story that uh, really uh, resonates with uh, South Africans and I'm sure the world over, uh, describing the life and times of Steve Bandubiko and of course uh, the moments leading to his death. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there, Dr. Andile Ma'Africa, author uh, and a man who has uh, detailed and, and researched Steve Biko very extensively, uh, as you heard heard with the number of people that he spoke to as he, he writes about uh, his life and the significance and the relevance of his leadership today.